Hi everyone, welcome back to the USS Plunger and her weekly patrol. Um, yeah, we're just um, heading in our patrol zone at the moment. We uh, need to patrol this area for a little while longer. Um, beautiful seas. And we're just, we're just sort of moving away from where we had our last contact, um, where we did particularly well. Bringing up the log, you can see we sunk two merchants in a nice attack. Uh, an auxiliary transport for 1478 tons and a medium modern split freighter for 2775 tons. That's on top of the Hansa freighter we sunk for 7900 tons earlier on on that patrol. So yeah, three kills so far and uh, we're sitting quite pretty with the tonnage as well so happy days. So what we plan to do is continue to head down here if I show you on the map, okay, these are the two ships that we sunk, and we're just plotting a course, which we believe is on a convoy lane between Saigon and Singapore. So if we're going to hunt around here for a little bit longer, uh, until we've either used up our torpedoes or all our fuel, and we will need to return to base. Torpedo-wise, we've got four torpedoes remaining in the forward tubes, four Mark 14s. Uh, which, touch wood, have been extremely good for us. They have been reliable, they have detonated, they have detonated when we've wanted them to detonate, i.e. when they're hitting a ship, and they haven't gone too awry with premature detonations or weird, weird uh, gyre angles. Um, so, touch wood, it's, uh, it's going well with them. Uh, we've got two in the rear and we've got two reserves in the rear as well. So we've got a fair few torpedoes which we can uh, look for some more prey. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to continue to head down here as the, uh, the seas are calm. Oh, the moon is up and the moon is bright. She's not ideal. Uh, they can see us better. Obviously that means we can see them better but um, it's always nice to talk attack when it's dark and they can't see anything. Right, but we'll press on and hopefully find something interesting. Okay, welcome back. Right, we just got a ra radar contact to suggest there's probably aircraft circling in here, but we've also received a message. So, all boats. Uh, Japanese forces occupy tu Tuolagi, Solomon Isles. USS Spearfish evacuates six army officers, six naval officers. If army nurses, sorry, 11 army nurses and one Navy nurse and one civilian. Oh, goodness me. Japanese cover force for Tuolagi, uh, which consisted of the carriers Shuho and escort, leaves, leaves to act as cover for possible Port Moresby landings. Right. Okay, we've put up the periscope, uh, the observation periscope, to sort of see what's going on. There's a couple of aircraft over here. Um, although the sea is a bit choppy and maybe exposing the conning tower a little bit, uh, getting down to periscope depth will at least, um, well, at least minimise it. A profile anyway, even if the conning tower does occasionally pop above the other uh, waves, so that should be um, all okay. So I was just having a look. Um, Port Moresby is over here, um, a million miles from where we are, unfortunately. So if there's uh, flat tops over there, well, uh, they ain't going to be there by the time we manage to get over there. So um, that's a shame. Desperate to try and hunt down a flat top and uh, sink a 
Japanese carrier, but the tonnage on that will have not just the tonnage, but the prestige of sinking such a valuable asset would be uh, immense. Although, you know, you can't get too much pride in these kind of things. It's all about doing the job and keeping the men alive. So we'll do what we must. And uh, once these aircraft have passed, we will surface and continue our patrol. Okay, a bit of time has passed and still haven't been able to um, see anything else in this part of the sea and we've completed uh, our time allocation in our patrol zone so let's have a look um, we're here and we think we're hunting this what I might do is follow this down and see if we can follow the um, the major route um, obviously our base is down here on the east uh, sorry, on the western Australian coast so if we follow this down through Java and then on the way back down to Australia, you never know, we might see it if there's a carrier heading down to Port Moresby, we might bump into something or a task group or something. So that's definitely worth a look. Hi everyone, welcome back. Right, we have finally, potentially, found a potential target. Yes, we've been um, sailing down past Java for quite some time now, and we've finally got a hydrophone contact. There she is. Come off battle stations, sorry, I didn't mean to go to battle stations. Secure from battle stations. There you go. Uh, that was a <laughs> that was a I forgot I was playing the mod section. Bees you, you, in vanilla is the binoculars, but uh, it's battle station commands. Anyway, so there is the uh, the contact we have seen. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Looks like a merchant ship. It's got uh, two masts and it's got the sort of the the bridge here, the funnel, then the little back bit. Uh, can we get an indication of what we're potentially looking at on the horizon? So, looking at something probably not terribly big. Just trying to get a, a feel for what we're, we're potentially looking at here. But I've not seen anything which is remotely like what we're looking at. Or maybe that. Funnel and the funnel looks thin, doesn't it? Compared to that one, looks quite chunky. Possibly that. That looks quite good. A medium rate bow splint freighter or split freighter. That could be it. What are they saying roughly around about six thousand uh, six and a half thousand tons. Nice. Okay, right, we're gonna close in. They haven't spotted us yet. Uh, it's a beautiful day, but if we can um, get away of using the deck gun, then we will. So, there she is. No deck guns, so we will use our deck gun to try and sink her. Save the what little torpedoes we have. Everyone is in battle stations. Right, man the deck gun. And there she starts to turn, and we get ready to fire. There we go, lovely. Let's have a look what we got loaded. High explosives. Okay. Bye. Oh, just shot. Just shy. Let's get to fifteen hundred then. High explosives. So we can probably go a little bit more. About sixteen hundred. Wait till she's reloaded. Get some fires going. Of course, we don't want to send any radio messages either. Oh, well, that could be the radio out. Eh? Well, that was a significant hit. What is she carrying? That's far more grandiose than I was expecting, I'll be honest. Right on the um, waterline there. We'll go back to the funnel area where we're trying to land the hits and get the fires going. Fire. Let's um, 
add a bit of range. I want to get on the decks and get the decks a ablaze. I've got armor piercing to pop holes in the hull around the water level to get the water going in. To build up the flooding. There you go, that's it. Hitting the deck, that's what we want. Quickly reloading as, uh, as best they can, I suppose. Bah. That was a good hit. No fire started, but... Uh, let's switch to armor piercing and put some um, shots down the hull. See if we get it just sinking. Obviously, putting up the red distress flare suggests that the ship is probably in a very bad way, but surprise from what we've actually shot at her. Right, let's get that down to about 1500 and start putting some shots along the bow, along the hull. That's a bit too high. Let's drop that down a bit. We want to be hitting. Well, right about where we have done, where the water line is. So water starts rushing into the boat. Pulling at the front, so as she drives forwards, the engine is pushing her forward. That will drive water into the uh, internal chambers and hopefully break any flooding defences they have. And... Uh, Get her well gone. Let's get some to the stern. Stern's obviously a very weak part of a boat. Was back in the Napoleonic days and it still is, so let's knock out the propellers, the prop shafts, all that kind of stuff. Dead in the water. And then that usually is quite fatal for any heavily damaged ship. There we go. That's more like it. That's more like it. Yes, sir. And Head we are slow. we're turning well, it's it. Still can't get a fire going in the uh, the forward section, but that looks quite an intense fire on the rear. Oh, they've abandoned ship. They have abandoned ship. Fire is spreading. Right. I think we will uh, stow the deck gun. I think yes, she's uh, she's done for. Head one third. Right. She is well and truly ablaze. The crew has abandoned ship. And that fire has roared all the way from aft to bow. And not a lot else in between has been spared. Wow. It's horrendous. Look at it. Look at it go up. Don't know what it was carrying. Clearly combustible. And there she goes. Slipping beneath the waves. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So the first ship we spot... Uh, we don't need to engage and use up a, do a precious torpedo. Use the deck gun and uh, we've been able to finish her off. Very nice indeed. There we go. Confirmation May the 9th. It was a medium rate uh, bow split freighter. 6,650 tons. Very nice indeed. Better than I was expecting. There she goes. Right, we have to continue uh, our course along the coast. It seems to be profitable. And uh, yeah, first sign is that um, you may get some unarmed lone traveling ships, which is very rare these days. So there's the ship mark there. There you go. We're just coming past Java now. Um, well, we're not really sure where we were going. Were we going down to. Fremantle, which is our home base. Um, we've still got our torpedoes. Everything else seems to be okay. Um, yeah, I guess it's how much fuel do we have? 
88. Yeah, only 12% fuel used. It's incredibly frugal. So what we'll do, uh, we'll continue to hug this coastline and uh, see if any other opportunities present themselves. Oh, we're being fired upon. Uh, oh, his coastal guns are firing. Yes, sir. Periscope depth. Periscope depth. Our batteries and our bolt. Oh my goodness me! Flank speed, take us harder, harder port. Let's get out of here. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Right, we took a bit of damage, but the batteries have been repaired. I've heard the cry. Yeah, all damage has been repaired. Um, Ninety percent damage. Yeah, we took a hit hit right on the uh, this forward bulkhead here but we seem to be relatively okay which is um which is a good thing let's periscope up let's go and take a look seagulls high yeah there's, there they are coastal guns buried into the ground and just uh, yeah we didn't see them until now but anyway um, we are sailing down between the coast and I'll show you in a moment so the quick scope see if there's anything on the uh, horizon see the uh, coastline there okay so here we are we are sailing down here into the Madura Strait through Java, and we've got a, we've got a, a, a couple of um, port areas here. Um, we've got Gresik. That does actually look like a U-boat pen, to be honest with you. Um, but we've got some uh, port facilities here, so we're going to actually sail this way, going through the Madeira Strait. Uh, and any shipping we come across, we may have a shot at. Obviously, we'll have to stay submerged because we now know there's um, active coastal guns on, on these. Uh, Bits of land which are jutting out. We got lucky. But um, looks like there's contact with a ship in port there. So we're going to keep continue sailing down. Hopefully we can see them and have a couple of pops with the torpedoes. Okay, I brought the periscope below the uh, the waves because the coastal gun has spotted the periscope. As you can see, it is incredibly shallow here. Incredibly shallow. You see the seabed, the weed. Make, we'll just keep the um, periscope up to make sure there's no subnetting or any um, mines suspended down here. Right. We've got a chance of having a little peek. Oh, it looks like a. We have got a. Um, An oil tanker right there, and there's another ship behind it in the quayside. We also have another port over over there somewhere. Wait, is that a carrier? That could be a carrier. Oh wait. And we could potentially have a capital ship there. Um, it's got to be the carrier, hasn't it? It's got to be the flat top. Right, let's go down. Okay, let's have a little sneaky peek. That is an aircraft carrier. Uh, we've got main base here. We've got more oil tankers. Look at that. And that's... What is that? That is a battleship. And, oh, it's a cruiser in front of a battleship. Sorry, the cruiser ends there. That's the cruiser, and then they got a huge battleship behind. Well, USS Perch did actually hit 
A Congo class battleship. That would be something. But in front of us, we have a carrier. Let us have a look. Who is this in front of us? There you go. Is it that? I think it might be. Fleet carrier Akagi class. Let's get that locked in. Uh, mass is 119 meters. Oh, feet, sorry. 37,000 tons. 31 knots. Okay. Scope down. Let's move in a bit closer. Okay, tubes one and two open. Now, one of the things we've got to watch out, see if they've got any, like, um, torpedo netting or something. So, tube one, fire. Torpedo in the water. Yeah, if you look how closely she is in there, that is incredibly... There may be a torpedo net. It's a Mark 14, so it could be just a faulty... But if you look how um, she's in there... Uh, oh, hello, we've got fires going over there. What's happened there? I can't see anything going. There's fires breaking out over there. I think there may be torpedo nets guarding that carrier. In which case... Three, three, zero, long range. What's bearing 330 long range? Um, we do have a cruiser and a warship... Uh, sorry, a battleship sitting here. Maybe that would be a good target. Let's lock onto the battleship. See if we can identify that. Um, go. Is it a Congo? Could well be a Congo, couldn't it? Let's get that locked in. Again, doing zero knots. She's just sitting there. She's going to be a while before she gets her... Um, her engine stoked. Right, they are aware of us. Tube two, fire. Tube three, fire. And just for good measure, tube four, fire. Right, now let's maneuver and try and bring the astern towards this freight. Uh, this. Okay, we've got fires breaking out on the battleship. Oh, there's actually a seaplane there, look. I hadn't noticed that earlier. Keep the um, periscope low just in case there's any more. I'd like to know what that fire is. I'd love to have a shot of that carrier, but I think there's it's too... It's really wedged in as well, and um, I'm, we haven't got much joy now. Uh, Previously, you could see the the scars from the torpedo impacts above the water, but they seem to have now be below the water's edge, so she could be definitely starting to list towards us. We've got four torpedoes in the rear, two loaded and two reserves. It would be good to put a couple of torpedoes into this cruiser and maybe use the last ones to finish off the uh, the battleship. Cruiser, uh, can we identify her from this angle? 
It's a bit. It's a tall order, isn't it? It could be that. It could be. That's oh, a Congo Bank ship. It's not that. Um. It's not a battleship. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Is it a heavy cruiser? A small. Looking at the funnels, it could be. How many guns are I can't see? We haven't got the a very good angle actually, so it's very difficult to tell. Could be a Mayoko class though from this angle, I'm not sure. Or maybe we just put the torpedoes into the battleship and try and confirm that kill and get out of here before they get up ahead of steam in all the uh, destroyers and patrol boats here. Right, there they are. Let's lock on to no the can we lock on to the battleship? I think we are locked onto the battleship, okay. Right, um Congo class battleship, yeah, right. Tubes five open. Tube six open. Right, tube six fire. Uh, oh, I might actually hit the cruiser. Um, so let's adjust that slightly. God. Uh, so the first torpedo struck the rear of the cruiser. That exploded spectacularly, which also triggered explosions in the battleship. The second torpedo struck the battleship, but my God, it was already engulfed in flame at that time. Um, distress flares in the air. I think we might have got both of them. It's probably time we go. I am worried that... There's a fire over there as well. That there'll be some enemy ships stoking their boilers and heading our way. Okay, it looks like the cruiser has gone. Battleship is still there. Confirmation, yes indeed. The heavy cruiser Furutaka class 7,100 tons sunk. A heavy cruiser, my goodness me. No news yet of confirmation from the battleship sinking, but the heavy cruiser, one torpedo, and she's gone. We must have got her just right because, as I say, her ex the, the explosion from her um, aft section set fires going on the battleship as well. Tube 6 is almost reloaded. We can always put another torpedo into the, um, the the battleship if we need to. Right, let's um, let's get going. I think we need to get going a little bit quicker than we are. We are creeping out of here, which is great, but... Um, we need to go. Right, we're moving further and further away from our battleship. Let's continue to um, take stock of the situation. It's difficult to see where the the mast stop now. There you go, 2,500 meters we are from it. We're still going zero knots and the angle of bow should roughly be the same because where we fired at it. She's almost directly behind us so um okay 
Tube 6 should almost be 91% loaded. Okay. Almost ready to fire. Right, tube 6. Tube 6 ready. Right, open tube. Tube 6, fire. Any minute. Any minute. Come on. The time would be for it to hit about now. Um, so we may have missed. It's taken longer than I was expecting. Unless we've moved slightly foot there. Oh, there we go. Okay, good stuff. We just moved a bit further away than I was expecting. Okay, tube 5 has been loaded incredibly quickly. Stand by. Last torpedo, last chance to sink this battleship. Fire. It doesn't seem to have finished her off. Right, let's go. We're out of torpedoes. We're out of time. We've got to move. Let's go. That is going to be the one that got away if she does not succumb to the damage. Ah, so frustrating. But I don't think popping up, finishing her off the deck gun is really an option right now. So, ah, we're going to have to leave her burning there. But we can be pleased with sinking a heavy cruiser and. Let's face it, that Congo battleship is not going to be in action anytime soon. It's going to be a full soon. It's going to be a full refit and repair. Okay, she's still you know, floating at the moment on the surface, but um, you know, the gap in a dry dock, fix that hull damage, all the burning internally, that's going to have to be repaired. All the wiring that will destroy. Ah, oh, yes, that is going to be months, if not a years, out of service. I don't know, <laughs> but it's going to be a long time, so we can at least put, yeah, you know, put that in our back pocket and think. Well, we're not going to see her. She's not going to impact any of the American fleet anytime soon. Oh, welcome back everyone. Right, daylight has broken and we were able to slip away before the destroyers and the patrol boats were able to get up a, uh, an engine of steam and come and get us. There's the uh, the land mass over there, so we've come back the way we went in. I didn't fancy going past all the parked destroyers as they were st stoking their boilers, so um, we came out the way we went in and we're making our way around. Uh, and we will be heading back to uh, free, uh, Fremantle in um, Australia now to um, rearm, get the repair to the damage that we, we inflicted from the, um, the coastal guns there. Um, and we'll report in and, and end this patrol to make sure that everything is uh, stringently repaired and uh, we get reloaded with the new torpedoes and more fuel. Uh, just to recap then. Uh, the battleship would not sink. Yes, we put, what, four torpedoes, five torpedoes into her? Uh, would not sink, unfortunately. Uh, maybe if we'd been able to hit the more forward sections of the ship, that would have um, overcome the ship's anti-flooding measures, and uh, she may have gone down, but it um, wasn't to be, unfortunately. Uh, but we did get the heavy cruiser, which is a small compensation 7,100 tons there so all in all that has been yeah if we can get back with this 7,900 for a hands of freighter 
1478 tons for an auxiliary transport, 2775 tons for a modern split freighter, 6650 tons for a, a bow split, uh, split freighter, and 7100 tons of heavy cruiser. Um, it's not a bad return for those Mark 14 torpedoes. So, um, yeah, we've got a bit of a way to sail. So we'll cruise the, the seas, hopefully get no um, attention from uh, any enemy air patrols. Uh, and we'll uh, hopefully return next week for more patrols in the high seas. So thank you so much for watching. I'll, uh, I'll spare you the long drive home. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.